Hey, what's up, everybody? Pastor Jay here with First Lady Jay. And listen, it was about this time last year where we were first hearing about this thing called the coronavirus, COVID-19. And we start hearing crazy stuff about how we were gonna have to shut down the city. We we're gonna have to shut down church. Right. I mean, I don't think any of us expected for us to be coming back up to that very same time to still be dealing with this pandemic. And listen, I, I just wanna encourage all of our members, everybody that we touch, I wanna encourage us to do everything that we can to fight this pandemic, to fight uh, this coronavirus. That means taking every safety precaution that you can, wearing your mask, social distancing, and thank God we now have a vaccine. Lady J has had both uh, both of her shots, she has both of her vaccines, and so she is fully vaccinated now, and I just wanted to bring her in front of everybody just to say some of her experience as she has gotten the vaccine and uh, what you can expect, and uh, just to kind of alleviate some of the fears that uh, some of you might be having when it comes to uh, taking the vaccine. Alrighty, guys, so when I received my first dose of the vaccine, um, that day I was feeling fine. Um, the only other uh, thing later on that happened was that um, my arm was sore. And most people had told me that had got it, that their arm was sore for one day and they were good. Well, that was not my story. My arm was sore for about a good four to five days. And you know, um, it felt kind of um, like painting under my arm a little bit, kind of like when you get the flu shot. Um, that's kind of what I normally experience. So uh, beyond that, um, that's pretty much what um, I experienced with my first dose. Um, I was a little anxious getting it, so my anxiety kind of played into it too. So that's just me being honest. Yeah. My anxiety did play into it, so that caused my mind to do some crazy stuff, but it was not because of the vaccine. It was just because of my anxiousness and um, something going into my body. Um, yesterday, I believe it was yesterday, mm -hmm. I received my second dose. And yesterday, um, I was feeling fine as well. Um, I woke up this morning and um, my arm was really sore. I tried to make sure this time when I got the vaccine, the first time I got it in the left arm, the second time I got it in my more dominant arm, which is my right arm. And so um, this time when I woke up this morning, this arm was hurting, it was like excruciating pain, but not only was this arm hurting, but this arm was hurting as well. So that's not everybody's uh, case. Um, but that was my experience. Uh, beyond that, I have like uh, maybe a low grade fever. I'm, I'm feeling kind of uh, a little funny on the inside, but nothing that like I can't handle. Just like um, just like I need to lay down. I'm tired. Um, no headache, but just um, just feeling a little weird on the inside. But other than that, I'm doing okay. Um, I would encourage you if you do have the uh, option to get it. Um, I would encourage you to get it. Um, and do whatever we can um, to keep our community, our community yes. safe. That's yes. most important, our community, because we have to care for one another. Mm -hmm. And so I don't want to be out here making anybody else sick, and I don't want anybody else making me sick. So I'm doing my part that I feel that I can do. It's up to you what you do, but mm -hmm. I feel like I'm doing my part to keep others safe. Amen. And so we want to encourage you. Listen, there may be some side effects. Everybody is different. Right. Uh, but there's side effects with all kinds of medicine. So exactly. uh, we have to trust God. We thank God for the for the vaccine, but we trust God no matter what medicine we That's use. Right. And so we want to do our part in trying to make sure that we can get past this pandemic. I know, I know you're got to be like me and you ready to get past this time. If, if, if it's nothing for uh, m nothing else than vacation, right. <laughs> uh, just be able to yes. uh, go somewhere. <laughs> so <laughs> let's make sure that we're doing our best so we can come back to worship. I want to be able to hug my members again. I want to be able to listen. There's been times I've been preaching on this virtual worship and I just felt a laying of hands. I just felt like I needed to do an altar call and lay hands and, yes. and you can't even do that in the pandemic. But right. we trust the spirit of God and we trust that what he's going to do. And I just want to encourage you to do what you can. Wear your mask. Wear your mask. Get the vaccine. Let's do this so we can get back together. God bless.
Good afternoon, everyone, to all our members, family, and friends. Thank you for joining us in worship again here at Unfailing Love Christian Church. And if this is your first time working with us, go ahead and type in the comment section the word love. We just want to reach out to you. Thank you for joining us in worship and hope that you're experiencing the love of God with us today. So on Wednesday night, we've been studying the book of Ruth in Bible study. Yes, we've been doing this over the last past couple of weeks. And if you have not joined in with us, make sure you join in with us this Wednesday. We meet on Zoom on Wednesday night at 7 o'clock. Pastor just takes us through the book of Ruth, another chapter in the book of Ruth. We study the words of God. We, we have conversation about it and just have a good discussion about what God is revealing to us. So it's Wednesday night. The study of the book of Ruth on Zoom at 7 o'clock. Hope to see you there. Okay, church, like I said, we are still in celebration mode. I hope everyone has been enjoying the, the way that the videos we've been showing this month, the old sermons, the passages that we've shown this month. And that's just a few ideas that we have just for this year. And if you've already sent in pictures and videos, thank you for sending those things in to us. And don't stop now. Continue to send those things in. Go ahead and send them to ULCC. 4068 at gmail.com. We want those pictures, those videos, and those old ideas of how to celebrate this year. We have a lot of great ideas, but we want to hear from you guys. So go ahead, help us out so we can celebrate 10 years together this year. Thank you. Okay, church, we need you to go ahead and mark your calendars for March 14th. Next month, we're going to have a church-wide business meeting. It's going to be sometime following morning service. We're going to have a business meeting and discuss the budget for the year. We're going to discuss our calendars. And we're going to give you an opportunity to nominate new deacons, deaconess, and elders for the church. So go ahead and mark your calendars. You want to come into this Zoom meeting that we're going to have as we discuss what's going on with our church. And since you are the church, we want to make sure you're informed of what's going on. Again, that's March 14th. Mark your calendars for that church-wide business meeting. And as we move into our offertory fair, we don't think we want to forget about our first fruit offer. Thank you to those who have already pledged their first group and already given. God is truly going to bless you. And if you have not given or pledged anything yet, there's not too late. Go ahead and pledge. Pass is asking for $250 for each member out of the church. And that goes above and beyond your tithes and offerings. So make sure that you do a pledge for your first group offering today. And if you like to give your tithes and offerings, you can go out to our cash app at dollar sign ULCC. Go out to our website at www.ulccstl.org or you can mail your tithes and offer into 4068 Maffitt Avenue, St. Louis, Missouri, 63113. We thank God for being ever present in our lives and always blessing us over and over again. Let us pray. Most gracious Heavenly Father, Lord, we just thank you, Lord, for this offering, Lord. We bless those who had to give and bless those who had not, that they may give on another occasion, Lord. Lord, we just thank you, Lord, for being able, God, and always providing for us, Lord, opening doors and closing doors for us, Lord. And we give you all the glory, honor, and praise that's due to your holy name. Amen. We want you to enjoy the rest of worship. Okay, church. As you know, church has been shut down for in-person services for almost about a year now. We did reopen for a short period of time, but had to reclose due to the effect of the pandemic. And there's been ministries that's been working behind the scenes throughout this year and have continued to make sure that our services continue to run. And today, I want to recognize two of those ministries that I cover, the media team and the praise team for their hard work. So to the media team, I just want to say thank you for everything that you do. To, to Kyle Burr, who came in late last year to work with us on the media team. He's worked on the soundboard. He's done some video work, even been a drummer um, replacement when we needed to. I want to say Thank you, Kyle, for just being a, such a willing vessel to come in and just work. You're such a hard worker, and your ideas, the things for us to do, have been greatly appreciated for what you've done. Uh, so, brother Kevin Bruden, who's been with us from almost the beginning, who's been working on our sound for the, over years now, but has come and did some video work for us in this last year, who's done some production work for us as we put these services together. Thank you, Kevin, for your hard work, your diligence, your late night that you spent up putting services together and your ideas and your willing, just being a willing vessel to be a volunteer to help do these things. 
to Minister David Scott. We want to say thank you, David, for coming in and helping us with our video production. David, you have been uh, such a blessing to this ministry to be able to shoot the videos that you do, um, the growth I've seen that you've taken over the last couple of months. And we just don't want to take any of that in vain. And we say thank you, David, for all that you've been doing for us. To Minister Jeremiah Bruton, who's away at school right now, but he came home away from school and he could have took a break and, and like any other college student said, I'm going to take some time off. But he came in and put his hand to the plow and helped us with our video production. He helped us get our lights together and things. And so, Jeremiah, I just want to say thank you for all your hard work. Thank you for the, um, the blood, sweat and tears that you put into this ministry. Thank you for just being a willing vessel to be able to be able to work for the kingdom. And to the person I call the jack of all trades when it comes to media, Marche Bruton, thank you, sir, for everything that you do from getting our sound together each week, from making sure our soundboard and, and, and our me media is together, for being a part of the band. Marche Bruton, thank you, thank you, thank you for everything that you do. We know that this ministry would not work right if it wasn't for you, Marche, on this media team. And I do not take that for granted because I do not know everything that happens around our media team, but I know the one person I can call to find out is Marche. So I say thank you for everything that you do to this whole media team. Thank you for working behind the scenes. You got on our front doing these things. You work behind the scenes. You um, People don't see you out front doing the production work, but you guys are the ones that's making it happen. Um, those late nights that you've put in, those those bumps in the road that we've hit here and there, but you have not stopped. You've continued to work. And I just want to say from me, the pastor, first lady, and the other leaders in the church, thank you for all that you do. Thank you for continuing to make this ministry run and move forward. Thank you for everyone that's enjoying the service right now. Thank you, thank you, thank you to this media team for your hard work you put in. Thank you. And to the praise team, you guys know I love each and every one of you dearly from the bottom of my heart. And I call you guys the hardest working ministry in the church. Um, you, What the praise team does and the band does each and every week is truly special. And over the last year, I felt like we've grown even more even together with each other and grown as a ministry. So I want to say thank you to each and every member of the praise team and the band. I don't want to start calling names because I don't want to forget anybody and I don't want anybody coming after me afterwards. But you guys know exactly who you are. And when each a member is missing from the praise team and out there, we feel that difference with inside the praise team. So I thank you all for the hard work that you put in over the, over the last year. There have been some tired nights. There have been some late nights. Nice. There's been some times where we didn't even want to do it, but we pressed forward and allowed the work of God to go forward. And we are the one that set the atmosphere for pastors to come up behind us and preach a powerful word. We set that atmosphere. We bring the, we help usher in God into the services and for pastors to be able to deliver and do what he does. So from me, the pastor and first lady, we just say thank you to the praise team. Continue to be a blessing to the people. Continue to be a, a blessing to each other. And I hope God blesses you all in a very special way. If I had money to pay each one of you all, I would in a heartbeat because you guys deserve all of that and more. So I just want to say thank you for all that you do. And thank you for continually to bless this ministry and bless this church for everything that you do. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you to the praise team. I love you all. Thank you. In us as a church that when we have disagreements and we will. Amen. Amen. I thought I would get everybody to say amen, amen. back at me. Amen. amen. When we have disagreements and we will. Amen. When we offend each other. Guess what? We will offend amen. each other. Yeah. But you can't have real relationship yeah. until you have disagreed with one another and then came back together. Amen. Y'all not feeling me. Yeah. I, had a, I had a young lady. God bless her. God bless her. God bless her. She got married and didn't let me know. Amen. And public service announcements. If you're a member of this church and you get married and don't let me know, we go fight. <laughs> Amen. 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 At least your pastor should know. Amen. And so she got married, didn't let me go to after the fact because, and of course, I'm not going to marry you unless I counsel you or somebody else counsels you. Yeah. Amen. I've turned people away. They said, Pastor, can you marry us this Friday? No. Nope. Because I'm not going to marry you if you have not been through a time of counseling with me or somebody else. Anyway, marriage is too, is too crucial. And so, and, so, and, so, and so this young lady, I got on the phone with her. I said, so you married? Why didn't you tell me? She said, Pastor, it's all 
doing good. She's, and she's like, she's like, Pastor, you know what? You know what? We ain't even had an argument before. Hmm. Oh, Lord. We ain't had an argument before. How long have I been here? Six months later, it was divorced. Oh, I don't care. Hmm. Y'all ain't never had an argument before. How do you have a real relationship where you never disagree and figure out how to get over the disagreement? That's not a real relationship. The Bible says, faithful are the wounds of a friend. That means that if you're my friend, you're going to tell me I'm wrong and still go be free. Amen. We don't have a real relationship in here if we offend one another and that first offense, we just we pile up. That's not real relationship. That's not family. Amen. What real relationship is that if you get on my nerves, I tell you, you got on my nerves, but we good now. Amen. Amen. That, that's real relationship. How many got a brother or a sister or a family member that has gotten on your Amen. 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 I done got on my wife's nerves. She done got on my nerves, but I love her the deepest. That's right. That's real relationship. That's right. So, so I told y'all, I got to go. How do we confront sin? I told y'all last week, one-on-one. -on -one, I already told y'all that part. I'm going to skip that. I'm going to go to Galatians, the sixth chapter. Uh, this is the other way how we resolve the sin in the church, not just sin against us. But if we see a brother caught in sin, we got to destroy them because they're part of our body. Amen. And so if part of your body is having some problems, you got to go fix it. Yeah. Amen? We'd be crazy not to go around here and fix If we got sin, that means our body is limping. Yeah. Yeah. Amen? We got to go take care of that and say, hey, we got to get that infected out. Yeah. And not, not just to get you out, but to get you restored. The Galatians, I'm going to read it. It says, brother, if any person is overtaken in misconduct or sin or of any sort, you who are spiritual, who are responsive to and controlled by the spirit, should set him right and restore and reinstate him without any sense of superiority and with all gentleness. That's how you do it. You do it with gentleness. So none of us have the authority to come down on somebody. Amen. Because we all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. Amen. 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 We come to him humble. Amen. We come to him humble. So we have to confront sin because we don't, uh, we don't, if we do not, we are limiting our power. We are limiting the effectiveness of our prayers. I told y'all that last week. But, but listen, I believe, and maybe you would, agree with me <laughs> that we have far too many things we can agree on in prayer for us to be missing out on the power that God has given us. Amen. 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 Would you agree with me just for a minute? I mean, come here. Let's agree on the salvation of our children. Yeah. Amen. 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 Would that, would that, can, we just, can we just agree about some stuff? Uh, that, that we're going to believe God for, that we're going to pray for it again. Let's disagree. Let's agree on the salvation of the members of this neighborhood. Amen. Amen. Real, real talk, real talk. We didn't have some incidents here lately. Amen. As much as we bless the neighborhood, amen, as much as we try to give to the neighborhood, we didn't have some incidents here lately. Amen. We didn't have a break in next door. Y'all didn't know about that, but it's all good. Amen. Amen. Somebody even walked off with the Smoothie King table yesterday. <laughs> Amen. And we don't need to pray about anything else. We need to pray about the salvation of this neighborhood. Can we agree? Can we agree on that? Amen. Amen. Can we agree somebody in here see your spouse up in here and they say they sit right next to you, but somebody that came to church without their spouse who refused to come to church. Amen. Can we agree with that sister? Amen. That they can't get their husband to church. That we don't pray. We just got to
agree on the power to abstain from sin. Come on, look to your left and look to your right. Amen. We all have sin and fall short of the glory of God. Can I get somebody that will be real with me this morning and say, I got some issues that I really need to get over. Oh, high five somebody and say, agree with me. Agree with me. We got to get over this. We got to get over this. Agree with me. We going to overcome this. I'm talking about I got some addiction. I got with somebody fornicating, somebody committing adultery, somebody got pornography, somebody got greed, somebody got lust, somebody gossiping. All of this, all up in the church. But we got power that if we stop acting like we are holy and we say, I got some stuff, and I need you to agree with me, brother, but I'm having a hard time with it. That's power when we agree. Push your neighbor and say, agree with me. Over there and say, agree with me. Yeah, we gonna agree on healing. We gonna agree on deliverance. We gonna agree on peace. We come against depression in the name of Jesus. We agree on prosperity. Let's agree on souls coming to Christ. about the book of Acts because they were going through some storms and they were going through some trials. They were going through some persecution. And let me say this because there's some people in here on today that's going through some storms and going through some trials, going through some persecution, going through some issues. Can I tell you that, uh, yeah, all things are working together for your good. Yeah, because what was happening in the book of Acts is the church was being persecuted. Yeah. Amen. But that, but what the enemy didn't know is that he was fulfilling prophecy for the church. Yeah. 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 Listen, yeah. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. amen. That, that, that the trouble that the church was experiencing was yeah. actually fulfilling the words of Jesus yeah. Christ. Yeah. In Acts, the first chapter, in the eighth verse, it says, You shall receive power. Yeah. After that, the Holy Ghost shall come upon you, yeah. and you will be my witnesses yeah. in Jerusalem. In Judea, in Samaria, and to the uttermost part of the earth. If it had not been for the persecution, they would have stayed in Jerusalem and had church all the time. They would have kept having all things in common. Somebody got to read the Bible like that. They would have kept just listening to the apostles' word and fellowship and eating, but they started getting persecuted. And so they had to go to Judea. And when they went to Judea, they spread the gospel there. Amen. They got persecuted some more, so they went to Samaria. And when they went to Samaria, the gospel spread even more. Somebody should have shouted as I'm just talking about the context because whatever you've been through, God knew it was going to happen. It did not catch him by surprise. And so he allowed it to be in your life to push you to a place that he needed you to be. Every door closed is not a negative. Sometimes he closes doors to reroute you. So, so, so 
Herod, Herod the king, he's persecuting the church. He think he think he's causing problems for the church, but he's just making the church grow even more. Amen. He's he's the representative of the enemy, the devil. Amen. He think he's causing problems in your life, but God is only using him to push you where he needs you to be. Amen. And so Herod, he kills, he kills the apostle James. And, and he sees that the Jews like that. Y'all know the Jews was against the Christians, right? Yeah, the Jews are the ones in the Bible who, who, who murdered Jesus, right? And so when they murdered murdered James, they was like, okay, good. You're coming against all the Christians. The Jews will back you up. Mm-hmm. Hey, man, can I pause right here? <laughs> because I just felt prophetic. Y'all, I'm not talking about in 30 days you're going to get a check. I'm talking about... I'm talking about another set of prophecy, amen, because because, because I got to speak to social justice because President Trump, Come on. yeah, yeah, President Trump, President Trump, that was, y'all heard about what happened and uh, people were, were ran over by a car and there was white supremacists and white nationalists that were coming against people and it was all out of hatred yeah. and then President Trump comes out and he does not condemn the hatred that came from the white supremacists. He, all he does is try to, he tried to play the field, y'all, because he said there was hate by some and from the other side. No, 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 this was all hate from one side. Don't try to play what he was trying to do was play to his base. And so he didn't want to lose his base, and so he came out and said, it came from the other side, too. Yeah, and so, and so this is the same thing that this King Herod did. He said, you know what? I like the Jews. They support me. They like when I kill James, and so what I'm going to do, I'm going to kill somebody else. And so we're going to pray for our country. Can we pause and agree? <laughs> Yeah, that even though he is the president, amen. Yeah. Oh, the church has some authority. Yeah. Amen. That we can lose some stuff, we can buy some stuff, and when we agree, amen, things begin to change. Yeah. yeah, so we agree, amen, on some change coming. Amen. In the name of Jesus. And so, 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 Herod says, you know what, let me get Peter. And so he captures Peter, put him in jail. And that brings me to my text, amen. And Herod, when Herod was about to bring him out, six verse, that night Peter was sleeping, bound with two chains. Somebody say two chains. Two chains. Not the rapper, amen. <laughs> bound with two chains between two soldiers, amen. Right. <laughs> amen. 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 And the guards before the door were keeping the prison. Uh-huh. Now, behold, I'm trying to tell you what happens when the church prays. Do me a favor. Ask your neighbor, what happens when the church prays? Uh, the text said when Peter was locked up, y'all read it earlier, that the church prayed continually for him. Uh-huh. And while he was in jail, this is what happened at the seventh verse. It says, now, behold, an angel of the Lord stood back. Yes. Y'all missed our first shot. Yes. That's my first point. Amen. When the church prays, God dispatches angels. Right. I'm just trying to tell you what happens when we agree. Amen. When the church prays, God dispatches angels. An angel of the Lord stood by him, and a light shone in prison. And trip on this, he said, and he struck Peter on his side. Yes. And raised him up, saying, Arise quickly. Do y'all really believe that God has angels looking out for you? I think we're quicker to believe that there are demons coming against us. And you're right. Amen. There are demons coming against you all the time. Amen. The Bible says we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against spiritual wickedness in high places. Amen. Amen. That they are organized. They are principalities and rulers. They have structure. And they're coming after all of us that believe in the name of Jesus Christ and believe in Jesus Christ. Amen. 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 But God did not leave us without power because what God will do is he will dispatch angels to fight on our behalf. There was a time when Daniel prayed in the Old Testament and he was waiting on the Lord to send his blessing. But the, when the angel got to Daniel, he said, sorry for the delay, but when I was coming to you, I was held up. The angel Gabriel was coming to deliver Daniel his word, but he got held up. And while he was held up, he said, but the angel Michael, the archangel, came and he fought for me. Gabriel is a messenger angel. Gabriel came and told Mary that she was pregnant. Gabriel is a messenger angel. But when Michael come, Michael came and fought. And they allowed Gabriel to get the message to you. I'm trying to tell you that God has angels that's warring 
on your behalf. Y'all didn't stop right there, but when you pray, and you're praying for somebody else, when you're praying for your children, when you're praying for your parents, when you're praying for your church members, God will dispatch angels.
because y'all should have got that. Amen. Yeah. <laughs> they got to the gates. Yeah. And the gates opened up all by themselves. Yeah. 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 And they opened the door. Open the door. <laughs> because somebody need to run down and sell her right quick. Yeah. Because I'm trying to tell you that when we agree. Amen. Yeah. How y'all know, know that the doors didn't open all by themselves? Yeah. But it was God in the midst of them that made doors open. Listen, listen. It don't even have to be a man there to open the door for you. All right, all right, all right. Somebody wait on some networking opportunities. You think you're going to have to get good with this person and that person before this door is open for you. But I'm trying to tell you when we agree. When you trying to make this way on your business, when you trying to get this door open, when we agree, doors. Doors will open all by itself. Amen. The guards won't trip off of it. Amen. Nobody will be aware. How did that door just open all by themselves? When we agree on some stuff, doors will begin to open for you. And they went out and went down, went down one street, and immediately the angel departed from him. Amen. Hey Amen. He had a specific assignment, right? The angel departed from him, and when Peter had come to himself, he said, Now I know for certain yeah, yeah, that the yeah, Lord yeah. has sent his angel yeah, yeah, and yeah. has delivered me from the hand of Herod and from all the expectation of the Jewish people. So when he had considered this, he came to the house of Mary, hmm. mother of John, whose surname was Mark, where many were gathered together praying. Uh -huh. <laughs> ah! They were still praying. Peter is walking up out of jail. They still praying. Yep. Why are you trying to figure it out? Uh, uh, God was already working it out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. You've been praying and you say, saying, God, why is it taking so long? It don't mean it ain't working. <laughs> Just because you ain't seen it. <laughs> My dad, my dad said this one time, I remember a long time ago, he was preaching, and he really was talking about, he was talking about marriage, he was talking about getting a husband and getting a wife, and he said, you pray about these things, he said, you have to realize what God does, that, that for this man to make it to you, he has to move this person out of the way. Yes, he does. Yes, he does. He has to make him change his job over here. Come on. He has to, he has to lose his job in California. Yeah. He has to spend some time in Minnesota. Yeah. Amen. And then he has to lose his job in Minnesota. And then God will open the door for him in St. Louis. Right next to you in your cubicle. Hey, that's how we so, so, so you praying, it don't mean it ain't working. Amen. 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 This is why we got to have faith. Yeah. And believe that when God started, when you started praying about it, God already knew about it. He already knew Peter knocked at the door of the 
gay and a girl named Rhoda came to the door. It sounded like a sister. Amen. Amen. Came to the door. When she recognized Peter's voice, because of her gladness, she did not open the gate, but ran in and announced that Peter stood before the gate. Amen. Amen. All right. Mm -hmm. Amen. Amen. I just want y'all to see the text already. Amen. Because yeah. somebody should be shouting already. Yeah. Amen. I, I just I just wish I had some rotor type folks. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Then when your blessing yeah. comes. Yeah. 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 Forgive me because my praise is gonna be so crazy that I forget to open the door.
It's all. 